Hey, Stars N1 Pro is a tiny budget mini PC that actually supports USB power delivery and display. Yep, took a while, so that's a big plus. But as with most of these budget minis, there are some quirks that need to be pointed out, and who better to do it than yours truly. The first thing I noticed with the N1 Pro is its lack of branding, even though it shows the logo on the product imagery. This way, it looks like a plain grey plastic box with ports on it. This is another budget mini PC with Intel's N150 Refresh, a 4-core, four 4-thread four CPU with UHD graphics pretty similar to the N100. From extensive testing, the biggest improvement is in integrated graphics with a small boost in single-core CPU performance. AUSTAR sells the N1 Pro in four different configurations. There's a bare bones starting at $139 US dollars with no SSD or OS, and then goes up in price as a higher capacity drive with Windows is added. All models come with 12GB of LPDDR5 memory. Pricing is decent, and the 512GB model for $165 US dollars is competitive with what we've looked at previously. In the package, AU Star includes a wall power supply, manual, monitor mount, and screws, as well as a HDMI cord. There's a power button on the front of the mini PC. The left side has three USB 3 ports and a microphone hole. Mmm, micro hole. Perfect for my The back has a 3.5mm audio jack, dual Intel 2.5 gigabit LAN, and the barrel jack for the power supply. On the right side is the full featured 10 gigabit USB C port supporting power delivery and display. It worked fine using the one cable solution from my USB C monitor. There's also DisplayPort and HDMI for a total of three displays, maxing out at 4K 60Hz. Opening up the N1 Pro is easy enough. Four exposed screws, and then lift the plastic until it pops off. Inside the pre-build is an M.2 2242 SATA drive. The slot supports NVMe, and maxed out at Gen 3 X1 speed after my test. That's just under 900 megabytes per second sequential read and write. Underneath the drive is the M.2 wireless card. 12 gigabytes of LPDDR5 is soldered on, not upgradable or replaceable. AU Star includes Windows 11 Pro. There was no malware or rootkits found pre-installed on the drive. The latest Ubuntu also worked fine during my quick test. And now let's have a look at how the AU Star N1 Pro holds up against a wide range of budget mini PCs. Right off the bat, Cinebench single core performance is lower than it should be for an N150. Unfortunately, none of the BIOS tweaks I tried were able to improve it. Here are the top three performing N150s for comparison. Multicore is also the lowest N150 score so far. There's a performance mode in the BIOS which improves the benchmark score, but it's still below what it should be. In Geekbench single core, the N1 Pro does better, but overall it's still one of the lower N150 scores. In multi-core, it's behind a bunch of minis like it was in the Cinebench results. The H.264 video encoding test is another multi-core benchmark. Again, average performance at best with a higher power profile in the BIOS. Since the N1 Pro features LPDDR5, it's going to max out the iGPU. And I found out it's running at 4400 mega transfers by default. What? Even though DDR5 starts at 4800 mega transfers. What? Again, a bias tweak, and we have the proper score. 3D Mark Time Spy only gets a slight boost from the extra 400 mega transfers, and Steel Nomad Lite gets even less. But hey, you might as well set it anyway. I'll show you how to do it in the bias section of the video. So I tested a few games using the faster memory speed and higher performance profile. Valorant is completely CPU bottlenecked, but has a decent frame rate with not so decent 1% lows. League of Legends is also bottlenecked by the CPU, but the frame rate is pretty good, even with the highest detail setting. I'm going to add one new game per N150 review to keep it more interesting. This time we're looking at Dota 2, a similar game to League of Legends, but has higher performance requirements. A 1080p low, it's close to 40 frames per second. Nothing great, but playable. Mini PCs with Intel Zen 150 make decent emulation boxes, maxing out at 720p, PS2, GameCube, and Wii. But even at this resolution, some games still won't run full speed, like NFS Most Wanted on GameCube. Media playback is also good thanks to Intel's hardware video decoder. 
The older Lake N chips have H.264, AV1 and a bunch of other decoders allowing for most media to play back at 4K 60fps. And if you're brave enough to edit video on one of these minis, it's actually not too bad at 1080p. The CPU is completely maxed out during the editing process, but stutters are minimal if you lay off the effects in Adobe Premiere. An audio latency test with Cinebench running in the background passed no problem. This usually means no thermal throttling on the CPU side. The included Shiji SATA drive is average, does the job and performs similarly to many other drives. Unfortunately, there is no working temperature sensor on it, but SATA drives are unlikely to overheat and thermal throttle. Bluetooth range is unimpressive at just above 3 meters or 10.5 feet. Luckily though, wireless range is good. At 12 meters or 39 feet from the router using the 5G band, there were no network problem notification issues while playing a game of Valorant. Idle power draw of 10 is pretty mediocre, and the maximum power draw depends on whether you use the default power mode or increase it. Either way, the AU Star N1 Pro uses less power than other N150 minis, but that's also with lower CPU performance, which is strange because the maximum CPU temp is low at 77C with both power modes. So the headroom for better performance is there for the taking. Too bad it wasn't utilized. What I've always liked about the budget end is that many of them are quite mini PCs as they don't need to get rid of as much heat. Then One Pro has above average fan noise under load. There aren't a whole lot of minis smaller than this one. It takes up about a third of a liter in volume, which is far below average. To get into the BIOS, use the delete key on startup. In advanced, ACPI settings are the power loss and wake on LAN options. I have to say I don't like this trend of power modes on these low power minis. I think they should all just work at their max performance. Anyway, in power setting, you'll find the option to change it. System agent has the memory configuration. You can increase the speed to 4800 mega transfers here. And don't forget to save and exit. Okay, that covers all the testing for this one. Now, let's go over the pros and cons. AU Stars N1 Pro is one of the only tinies to include USB-C power delivery and display, and that gets a big thumbs up. DDR5 is included for the price. Cooling is good with a low maximum CPU temp, but CPU performance is lower than other minis, and changing the power mode doesn't bring it up to where it should be. The default BIOS settings should be properly configured out of the box, and non-user replaceable memory is always a downer. The Ace Magic Vista showed a sodium slot can be done on a mini PC this size. That's the AU Star N1 Pro. Pretty decent for the price, with some flaws, some of which can be fixed by the user. Are you looking for a mini PC for network assisted storage? Well, AU Star has a mini specially made for NAS, and you can find a review of it right here. Cheers!